Here's our campsite on the Zambezi River at Manapools National Park. And we're in, ex in an exclusive site, which means we're kind of isolated and remote and on our own out here with minimal uh, facilities. In fact, just nothing more than a, a, a drop toilet or pit toilet. But beautiful setting here. Um, on the edge of the river and floodplain, looking out across the, the floodplain, across to Zambia and the Zambian escarpment, which is rises a couple thousand or more feet uh, up in elevation, uh, relatively close to the river's edge over there. Whereas on the Zim, uh, Zimbabwean side, there's probably uh, 30 kilometers of, of kind of flat land, uh, not all of which is floodplain of course, but um, before you hit the escarpment to the south. And it's actually an unusual day today because it's cloudy. So this is sunrise, um, but with a pretty complete cloud cover. So my guess is the clouds will burn off quickly though because there's almost no chance of rain this time of year. Um, but anyways, this river and these channels and pools are just filled with hippos. So we're, we're serenaded by hippos kind of all, all night long. And elephants come out and graze on the, on the grasses out there in the floodplain. And if you heard that, those were fish eagles that I think are nesting right behind me. Okay, cheers. Oh, this one not that big. Yeah, that's too a juvenile. So here in Manapus, we say um, treat every water as dangerous. There are crocs in each and every water where you see. Two. You see the other one? Mm -hmm. And so far that makes four dogs. Yeah, so which means hunting. Hippo. Yeah, hippo doesn't care too much about the dogs. Yeah, it's too big. Not worried. Still tracking this wild dog pack on the hunt, but so far they've been unsuccessful.
Just after sunset at our campsite on the Zambezi River. And uh, we have a little matriarchal family group here. A couple moms and a couple babies. And what's interesting is we learned today <clears throat> that there are tuskless elephants here. Um, and it's genetic. So, I don't know if you can tell, but this female out here with this baby does not have tusks. Um, and then, interestingly, that female has one tusk, and the other one's missing. And we just passed another family group on the way in, <clears throat> where two of the um, adults did not have tusks. So, kind of an interesting development here in the... Manapool's elephant population. Anyways, we're going to enjoy watching these guys dust and frolic in the dirt. These little guys are having fun playing while we uh, set up for dinner. Okay, cheers. Sunset at our Zambezi River campsite. Our campfire, if you can see that, and our chairs to be enjoyed in a moment or two. There are a family of elephants out there. Probably just barely make them out. Just another beautiful sunset and Zimbabwe. Right, bye. Look who came to visit us at our Zambezi River campsite. Nancy and I are enjoying a siesta at uh, our exclusive campsite in Mana Pools National Park. And uh, we both had our heads in our books. Saw this well came down for a drink. And I think he satisfied his thirst. Maybe he's gonna head back in inland for more feeding. Alright. Bye. And we have another visitor to our campsite. Um obviously this young bull elephant who's just casually and quietly feeding over here on the edge of the opening and uh, not likely to come close to us like our past encounters with bull elephants in the campsite because as you can see there's nothing but bare ground between us and him so probably no desire to come across this bare ground to where we are Anyways, it's funny because uh, he's kind of behind us right now and we're sitting and looking out at the water. And uh, we keep hearing something back there, but none of us turned all the way around. And let alone to, to find this elephant back there foraging. Okay, bye. Here we are at one of the mana pools. This one happens to be choked pretty much with an invasive non-native plant that we're told is brought in by the hippos as they move from one water body to another they carry this plant oftentimes in their dung and it establishes in these ponds or pools and takes over and apparently the hippos don't eat it but the elephants will eat it as you see here 
as will the buffalo. And what's interesting here is you've got all the egrets here just waiting for insects and any other little invertebrates and stuff to get scared up by the elephant's action. And the African chicanas too, those small browner birds. Oh, and the glossy ibis too. So you got hair, you got egrets, ibises, and chicanas all here trying to take advantage of the elephant's activity. I want to show you this big guy here that I was just talking about has some really big tusks. I think those are the biggest tusks we've seen of any elephant in this park for sure. Okay. And then it's also hard to see because it's gray, but this guy actually has a radio collar around his neck, if you can believe that. Uh, it's a uh, big harness that goes around his neck and has a big GPS transmitter package on the top so that from satellite um, the biologist can monitor this individual's kind of every whereabouts and movements and uh, hopefully learn some useful information from it. Anyways, hopefully you could see those tusks because they're massive. Could be Grumpy or Spike? And Nancy says the name of this bowl could be Grumpy or Spike. Or Fred Astaire. Or Fred Astaire. <laughs> or Boswell. Or Boswell. I guess these are the named bowls that have transmitters on them? Yeah, <laughs> Okay, bye. Come across this bull elephant who as you can see has one very long tusk and one broken tusk and he is uh, eating these stems these stems of some shrub here breaking them off We're wondering how is he going to get his 300 pounds or so of food a day by eating these little woody stems. But maybe he just needs a little roughage today. We're on the floodplain of the Zambezi River, and um, kind of wanted to show you this environment and discuss the interesting annual cycle here, because during the rainy season, the wet season, starting in November. The animals all disperse into the uplands because there's water everywhere. And this area essentially becomes, you know, a bunch of connected lakes where there's water everywhere. And the understory vegetation, the grasses, grow profusely. So during the wet season here, there's very few grazing animals and there's just grass, chest, head high everywhere that sprouts up from the rains and then as the dry season begins the animals start to concentrate here and start to eat down all of the herbaceous vegetation all the grasses and you get what you see now which is basically a park-like setting where there's just a little bit of stubble left and as the season progresses, the termites will actually basically clean up all the rest of the vegetation on the ground. 
and there's termite mounds everywhere here. About every hundred feet there's a massive termite mound. And so by the end of the dry season, essentially it's bare ground because the termites have consumed everything. Um, and the animals are forced to browse on leafy vegetation, woody vegetation. And so there's a, you know, a browse line that persists over time. But then as soon as the rains start again, like in November, then everything, uh, you know, regenerates. There's a flush of new vegetation, and the cycle begins again and again, over and over. So, pretty, pretty interesting uh, annual dynamic here. All right, bye. Does this elephant have a name? Do you know this individual? Uh, it's, uh, is it at night? No, there's some guys who know their names. They are three or four elephants. Because I know it would be like wanting to eat. There's a similar tree behind them. Oh, okay. Yeah, it may cross in between them and in between the buildings. It's amazing how quiet it is. Yeah. You know, Yesterday we were sitting in our camp, and I looked up and there was an elephant.